getting all the achievements in Resident Evil 7 was terrifying. Okay, let's get out of here. Stay out of here! Not cool. Since it's currently the Halloween season while I'm filming this, I thought it'd be a great idea to play Resident Evil 7 for the first time ever. And to make sure that I get the full scary Resident Evil experience, I'm gonna be grinding for all 37 achievements in the base game. Let's go. Now to get all the achievements, we're gonna have to do three playthroughs of the game, one normal, one speedrun, and one on the hardest difficulty. During our first playthrough, we'll get most of the achievements like the story ones, random tasks, and collectibles. This game starts off with us playing as Ethan Winters after he receives an email from his wife Mia, who's been missing for three years. The email says to come get her from the Baker Farm down Louisiana, and after arriving, we get our first achievement. This is the place. Well, that was easy. <laughs> first achievement. <laughs> Travel to Louisiana. Dude, this is sick. Look at that house. That is so creepy looking. That looks like it's going to be a terrifying house and I am all about it. Our first goal was to find a way into the house. And while we were exploring, we get our second achievement for obtaining an item and then another for closing a door right after we find our way into the house. Looks like Asmongold's fridge. After making our way through a few rooms, we come across our first videotape. Now in this game, there are four different types of collectibles that we have to get the achievements for. Files, coins, statues, and videotapes. And some of these are really hard to find. So I guess we, we're gonna play this tape now. Boom. The first tape is of a group coming to the same house to film a scary documentary. The tape shows them exploring the house and getting creeped out, but it was at this point that I realized I almost messed up already getting our first collectible coin. When starting the first tape, you have to turn around immediately and look on the ground for a lockpick. Oh, a lockpick! Why is there a random lockpick there? With a the lockpick in hand, we head back to the kitchen to unlock the drawer for our next achievement. Master of Unlocking! Nice! Right after this, one of the three guys goes missing, so we go looking for him. You first. For sure, man. I like your creative eye. <laughs> what do you see? What is it? No, absolutely the fuck not. No, no, they absolutely ripped off Blair Witch, and I'm not about that. Movie traumatized me as a kid. Now that we're done with that tape, and before I go further, since we unlocked that drawer in the past, now we come over here, and this is gonna be unlocked. There we go, antique coin. Afterward, we make our way back down the hole from the videotape and push along underneath the house to eventually find Mia trapped in a cell. She's shocked to see us, but seems kind of off. You shouldn't be here. Mia is worried that the family keeping her trapped is going to find us, so we try to escape ASAP. And while our backs are turned, we hear something take Mia and we end up getting separated. Oh, fuck me, man. No, no, no. Um. I, I just have to kill her? Arms in the air. Achievement unlocked. Block and attack. Did he just kill his wife? Welcome to the family, son. Welcome to the family, son. After stopping Mia, we get knocked out and we get taken to a new house somewhere on the property where the creepy Baker family has taken us. Lucky for us, they get worried that a cop might be showing up soon, so they take off to take care of it. We end up escaping while the family is away and run into the cop that shows up. Hey, you gotta help me. The guy gives us a knife to protect ourselves and tells us to meet him in the garage. But before heading there though, we took our new knife and got another achievement for destroying our first statue in the game. Now that that was done, it was time to meet back up with the cop in the garage where things took a bad turn. Okay, um... Did I just shoot him out? After defeating Jack, we finally make our way to the main part of the house. 
It's here that we get a random phone call from a girl named Zoe, who we assume is the daughter of the Baker family. And for some reason, she seems to be helping us out. She tells us that we need to find some keys in order to escape the house, and going to the front door, it looks like we'll need three dog head keys. Also, while we're in the main hall, we get our next achievement for placing a random item on the shadow plinth, as well as trying psycho stimulants for the first time. Do I really have to go next to her? I feel like she's like gonna jump scare me or something. No, you're just gonna... Can I... Thank you. I thought she was gonna jump out at me for sure. While looking for the keys, we make our way through the house and come across our next tape. This tape is of Mia trying to hide from the family mom, Marguerite, and at the end of it, we get our next achievement. Oh, I really, I, I don't have a good feeling about this at all. I don't know why this tub being in the middle of this room is like really creeping me out. Oh. Oh. My little girl has given us uh, a gift. And this gift is with me all uh, Let's go, let's go, let's go. I don't like this. I don't like this. As you can see, I'm assuming he can't die. Afterward, we easily find two of the keys we need, but the third one is likely down in the basement. Does your door open? <gasps> Hello? Oh my god, that came out of nowhere. Um, okay, we have official zombies now. So that's fun. Oh my god, they're fast. All right, um, the game just got real out of nowhere. After fighting off some more zombies, we finally find our last key, as well as another boss fight. Oh, I think there's an achievement for this. This might be his, like, scissor attack. So we're just gonna try dodging. Scissor attack. What's your scissor attack? That? There we go, duck. <laughs> if you love life, which I do. Oh my god, I'm out of ammo. What do I do? What do I do? Oh, wait, I can use the chainsaw back? Oh my god, that was Do me a favor. intense. Stay dead. After defeating Jack, we finally make our way back upstairs and unlock the door for our next achievement. We did it. You ain't getting away? Are you sure? Escape to the yard, because <laughs> I think I just got away. Maybe. Yeah, no, this game was just getting started. Next up, we have another phone call from Zoe where she explains her family is infected and that we need to make a serum to cure it. We head off to the old house on the property where there might be a possible cure. As we enter the place, we run into a few bugs where we get a handful of achievements, like finishing an enemy with a knife, taking down two enemies with one shot, clearing insects off a door, getting a bigger backpack, and having our first run in with Marguerite. Okay, if I'm not mistaken, I think there's an achievement for just going and attacking her. Like, I, I think the average playthrough, you're just supposed to avoid her, but we're gonna go after her. So let's do it. Okay, where is she? Okay, we're just gonna hit you with a shotgun then. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. Is this doing anything to her? Oh, I did it. Pack off, Mrs. B. Okay, let's get out of here. Stay out of here! Not cool. Dude. Okay, I, I remember there's an achievement that we gotta get. You have to, like, shoot her while she's lunging at you or something. Oh, uh, you know I'm gonna find you in the end. So I need her to, like, crawl on a ceiling or something. This is it. Oh, come on. I didn't shoot in time. Come on, one more time, one more time. Do it for us. This is it, this is it. No, go back on the ceiling. There we go. But this is it. We did it, we did it. I think. Why didn't the achievement pop? I'm so confused right now. Come on, attack me. Oh, 
Yes, right here, right here, right here. Please turn around, look at me. Yes, yes, this is it. Or not. Right here, right here. This is it. Oh my god, we got it. Fly swatter. Oh my god. <laughs> that was way harder than it should have been. After a really long tough fight, we finally take her down. We can now make our way into a new room where we discover that we need to find a special head and an arm to create the serum that will save Mia and Zoe. We pass through some dark, creepy kid areas and find the arm in a secret hidden room, which afterwards gives us our next achievement. Right after, we find out that the Baker family son, Lucas, has captured Mia, Zoe, and the head that we need to make the serum. In order to get Lucas, we're going to have to find the two key cards to unlock this door. While we're out finding the keys, we come across our third videotape. In the tape, we take control of someone who Lucas is forcing to play a twisted escape room, where the goal is to put a lit candle on a birthday cake. So now we got to relight this thing? Okay. So we need to disable the water. Here. That turns off maybe the water or the gas. This is actually pretty fun. I'm not gonna lie. It's like a, it's an escape room. Damn, that is messed up. We eventually solve the escape room in under five minutes, giving us our next achievement, but unfortunately the person we're playing as ends up dying right after solving it. But playing through this tape is going to help us out later on. Afterwards, we find the keys and make our way into the rest of the house, where Lucas has set up more activities for us to go through. He's booby-trapped multiple rooms, and we have to fight our way through a barn. And eventually we make it to the same escape room that we saw in the videotape. Since we already know how to beat it, we're going to do it in a way where we don't get killed at the end. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Um, what do I do with this? We escape to the back room where Lucas has fled from, and we finally get the head to make our serum, along with rescuing Mia and Zoe. With the ingredients, Zoe makes two doses of the serum that will cure both hey, of them. One of those is man. Hello? I had a feeling we were going to be doing a boss fight. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, shit. Come on, come on, come on. Oh my god, oh my god. Reload. I can't reload in time. Use the serum on him. You want me to cure him? I don't think the right? serum fixed him. I think that just yeah. killed him. Come on. Mia's waiting for us. I had to use one of them. There's only one left. What the hell are we gonna do now? She told me to use it. Well, I don't know you, so screw you. I, we're going with Mia. <gasps> go! Both of you just go! Sorry, not sorry. I mean, she was the one that said to use the serum on the dude in the first place, so that's her fault. After we choose to save Mia, we escape from the property on a boat, but quickly come across a destroyed ship. Something comes out of the water and attacks us, and we end up waking up playing as Mia, giving us another story achievement. Confused, we push through this creepy abandoned ship, getting flashbacks of some sort of attack that happened by a girl. And we come across the girl in person, and she makes us watch a videotape so that Mia can remember what happened to her, which also gives us an achievement for watching all the tapes. During the tape flashback, we learn that Mia was actually working on a secret project developing a bioweapon. They were using the little girl Evelyn as a test subject, but she broke out and used her new powers to infect everyone around her and to destroy the ship. After the tape, our goal as Mia is to find and rescue Ethan from the creepy ship, which we find out is now crawling with zombies. Oh god, oh god. Okay, there's actually an achievement. If I just let him grab me, I think, and I give him a... A bomb? Okay, I need you to grab me. I don't know if this guy grabs. This guy might be different. Wait, I'm like pretty sure I'm supposed to be able to place the bomb in him if he grabs me. 
Oh, right here, right here. Just let me do it. <gasps> that was sick. Maybe it still works. Okay. Bottom level. S2. You know, honestly, the type of scares that get me the most is more of like the paranormal or like those kind of jump scares and creepy vibes of like maybe being lost in the woods or in a scary haunted house. But for some reason, the whole like nautical hauntedness vibe doesn't do it for me. But that was still scary, though, because it was a jump scare. We eventually make our way through the entire ship and get an achievement for finding the last collectible coin, as well as eventually finding Ethan. As we regain control of Ethan, Mia seals us out of the ship so that we can go and find a way to stop Evelyn for good. What are you doing? What are you doing? Saving your life. As we're leaving the ship, we get a story achievement, and then we head into the salt mines where we discover a hidden lab. In the lab, we create a toxin that should be enough to take out Evelyn, and then we read our last file for an achievement. Oh, I hate this. Should I go over there? Oh god, I don't want to go forward. No, you're not gonna make me crawl. Okay, claustrophobia is one of my, like, actual worst fears. Okay, that wasn't bad. Oh, shit. Okay, bring it on. <laughs> Easy. Oh, just kidding. What do we got? Oh, one of these? Not bad. Oh, we got a couple. That was really easy. That gun slapped. Hell yeah. As we get to the end of the salt mine, we find out that the original farmhouse is connected to it, and we find our last statue for our last collectible achievement. E001. Is the old lady Evelyn? We make our way back through the house to find Evelyn up in the attic. Come on. We were right that it was the old lady that we saw with the Baker family, and Evelyn puts up one last fight before we defeat her to beat the game. Yo? Holy. And the game ends with Ethan and Mia safely getting flown away in a helicopter. What a good game. For the first playthrough, we get achievements for getting the first ending and two that stacked for beating it on the normal difficulty. Okay, eight hours for our first playthrough? Not bad, honestly. We have to do a second playthrough where we speedrun it, and then we have to do a third playthrough where we play it on the Madhouse difficulty, and we're gonna have to get a whole separate set of coins, I believe, and we need a different ending, and we will be on our way. So with the second playthrough, we're gonna be going for a few different achievements. The main goal is to run through the game as fast as possible to beat it under four hours. Honestly, this wasn't too hard because we know how to solve most of the puzzles now, but the thing making this playthrough more difficult was that we also needed to beat the game without using the item storage boxes more than three times, and we can't use more than three first aids. Overall, this wasn't too hard to do though because we were on the easy difficulty, and I also decided to save Zoe instead of Mia this time around, but honestly it didn't really change the ending that much, but it did give us yet another achievement alongside the other three during the speedrun. All that's left at this point is two more achievements, beating the game on the hardest difficulty, and finding all the collectible coins throughout it. For the third playthrough, we're going to be playing on the Madhouse difficulty, which unlocks after beating the game the first time. In this difficulty, there are some changes throughout the game, like only being able to save with a limited amount of cassette tapes, much tougher enemies, more random enemy placements, some items are now in different locations, and there are more collectible coins in different spots. Even though this was challenging, I really enjoyed going through it on this mode. As I continued through this playthrough, it really hit me how much I enjoyed this game. 
The best way I could compliment this game is that it feels like an adult themed Zelda. The story is great, it has awesome puzzles, there's distinct areas that you often have to come back to after finding new gear. There's so much depth and complexity to this game, but it never feels overwhelming. This was genuinely one of the better horror games I've ever played, and I'm really excited to play Resident Evil Village now. Oh my god, we did it. Who's your daddy now? Beat the game on Madhouse. Holy crap, we did it. Let's go. Madhouse is officially complete. 4 hours, 38 minutes. It took a lot longer than that in reality, but honestly, what an amazing game. Let me know in the comments down below if I should go for the DLC achievements as well in a new video. And if you haven't subscribed already, be sure to do so. But that is going to do it for me today. Seriously, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.